Hey, what's up, guys? Jake here with another episode of On The Rise Music Podcast. Today, we are honored to have special guest, DJ, and producer, Mazana. How's it going, man? Huge fan of your music. Oh, dude, I appreciate it. It's going well. Just uh, trying to stay cool. It's like 100 degrees outside here in Arizona, even though it's end of October, which makes no sense. But uh, yeah, man, how's life treating you? Um, you know what? As a matter of fact, I also am here in Arizona. <laughs> so I know exactly what, yeah, I'm down here in Tucson. I go to the U of A, as a matter of fact. Dude, that's where I went. No way. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Graduated, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Graduated 2018. No way. My sister graduated 2019. <laughs> Damn, this that's is a crazy small. Well, I'm glad to. Well, if that's the case, I'm glad to have a, a former Wildcat on here. Like, damn, that that makes me feel so happy. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm up here and I'm in, I'm in Old Town, Scottsdale, right now. Oh, okay, you're living you're living large then over there. I'm hanging. I'm, I'm hanging in here, man. <laughs> it's a little weird, as you know. Like everything shut down here in Old Town, so it's just been like staying at home, working from home life, which is nice, but also like get distracted way too easily. Oh. Uh, totally. So, yeah, yeah. It's just the separation of like home and office or like even just home and work area it doesn't even have to be office it's, it's like sure. it's all skewed now so yeah I totally understand that it's it's I mean it's not that I don't get my work done it's that it takes me it takes pulling teeth to get my work done in, in a, oh, sure. at, at, at this point um well, it's like I have my animals here dude so like you know my dog starts barking or whatever it is <laughs> at like one o'clock I know I have to take him out and then kind of side draft whatever I'm doing so Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I totally get it. I actually, as a matter of fact, this is probably the first time in the world to be hearing it, but I actually picked up a dog a couple of weeks ago. So really, yeah, I've been living with uh, this little guy down here. His name is Boss. I'm going to show all the fans and you real quick. Oh my God. What kind of dog is Boss? He is a Queensland healer with, I'm guessing a terrier mix, bull terrier mix because of his head and everything. But I mean, yes. six months old, he's just, he's a baby. He's just, he's just, oh. I've seen these breeds of beautiful dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I told my parents about it. And my dad was like, uh, my, my parents were a little skeptical. They're like, well, you're going to foster him. Right. And I was like, sure. Yeah, we'll do that. And then, um, within a couple of days, my dad just started texting like, yo, can I see a picture of my dog? Like, where's my dog at? And I was like, well, I guess there's the answer. I guess, I guess you're saying us now, buddy. So, um, but yeah, no, it's pretty exciting. And I, trust me, dude, I, I, I totally get what you're saying. The whole dogs and everything. It's, Sure. Yeah, I mean it's fun though. It's a good little uh, a good little um, mix up to my routine. Gives me gives me something to wait like actual like not that I didn't have reason to wake up, but now it's like okay, I got to take care of this little guy. I got to take him out, feed him, give him a walk. You know, all these yeah. Things. No, definitely routine now. Like yeah, it's forced me. And not that I wasn't a morning person before, but like essentially for me, you know, I, I didn't really have a full reason to be up at five thirty. I could be up at <laughs> six, still get around my day. But now yeah. I'm up at five thirty. Which is, you know, it's great, but it also sucks because now when I wake up, it's still pitch black outside. Uh -huh. You know, it wasn't like that a month ago where it felt okay a month ago. And now I'm like, dude, you know, I need caffeine the second I wake up. <laughs> yeah, you actually, know? as a matter of fact, I, I, I noticed that. I'm not going to lie. I've noticed that in myself a, a little bit where like a, like a week or two ago, like when it was a little bit more light out, I was waking up and jumping out of bed and, and, and ready to go. But now I'm just like, oh like crawling out like a zombie and it's just like damn like why can't i get even more amount of sleep but i don't even realize it maybe it is the dark you know <laughs> sure yeah you know it's it is what it is though but obviously like i'm i'm happy it's winter time quote unquote now because it's my favorite time in arizona oh insane, you outside because it's 112 degrees and like it's scorching you know <laughs> oh totally but then we're gonna get into the days of february where it's like 64 in the morning and then 100 and like 85 at like within a couple of hours and you're just like dude is it even worth it to take a jacket <laughs> or sure. wear pants at this point Ugh. very bipolar and that's kind of like a reason why i want to get to la i'm, I'm from here I've been here 24 years i'm like ready to not have to be hot during the summer you know like <laughs> i'm ready for that i'm ready for that change like temperature wise oh i i totally feel and i mean hey going right into it the tracks you've you've put out on spotify like you've put on numbers and you've done some things um, so, that. I mean, it's only a matter of time before you achieve that goal. I mean, I'm sure you, you're, you're, you're on top of your, your, your grind and everything. You understand what you need to do. Um, so, I mean, Hey, all power to you, man. Like for real, like you're like, you're, you're, um, music's good. Like it's, it's, it's very catchy. It's, I mean, as you describe it, um, it's very ominous and mysterious. Um, would you like to go expand a little yeah, bit more yeah. on, cool. um, on that vibe and everything? For sure. Yeah. I appreciate that, man. Um, well, like it, 
it's been a grind. And, um, you know, for me with the Muzana project, um, I had a project before this and we can talk about that later, but this was kind of more of, of me. Right. And during the day, like I'll listen to some electro, I'll listen to this and that, but I typically listen to lo-fi during the day or like very relaxing house music, Chris Dussie. Um, but like when I want to actually like channel what's like really inside and what really, you know, makes my clock tick, it's electro and this kind of vibe. Um, but with that being said, I think for me is as an artist, I'm always looking to figure out how to explore other things and explore different sounds and, you know, keep myself in tune with the project because the whole reason why I'm doing this is just to have fun. Right. And obviously, you know, my dream would be to be on tour and to be, you know, an artist that can go around the world and, and, you know, attract crowds and that's great. But also like, if you're not having fun, then what's the point of being an artist? Um, so now like a lot of the music from this year has been very um, electro, very ominous, very dark. I'm kind of transitioning more into this like melodic, um, vocal centric kind of vibe. And it kind of matches okay. a little bit with the first project I had, which my first project was called Low Key. Um, and that was very vocal centric, very pop, very, um, very mainstream-esque, right? Mm -hmm. And part of the reason why that project was disbanded was realistically like, I have a dead mouse shirt hanging on my wall. And that's kind of, I've always appreciated Electro House and that kind of vibe. Um, but now I'm like, okay, well, since I listen to lo-fi, I listen to a lot of melodic stuff, you know, how can I incorporate that while staying genuine to what I like? So that's been kind of something I've been doing a lot with my newer productions. Don't get me wrong. Like I still have, I have a collaboration with a, a duo called Whoop Logic. Um, and they're known for being signed to Barone family and, and they have a lot of really aggressive records. So our, our tracks actually mid tempo, very aggressive, very just like it's, it's in your face, like, holy shit, this is wild. Um, and it, it definitely follows suit of the other production I've been putting out this year. But then there's some other stuff that like I can hear on, you know, musical freedom or um, on revealed where it's very like has that European like Tomorrowland main stage mm -hmm. kind of vibe, but it's still it's still kind of linear with what I'm doing. So right now, like I'm a little I'm a little uh, intrigued to see how people respond next year, because it's kind of this variety of two different sides of the spectrum. But I'm trying to like bridge that gap, essentially. So it's going to be interesting to see if I can pull this off. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, man, I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, of course, man. I mean, for an artist to to step out of themselves and be like, I want to do something that's more um, in line with who I am. Uh, like you said, you you want you're curious as to how the crowd's gonna perceive it, and a lot of the times artists are scared to go out of the way because there's their their success or if it's not if it's if it's not broken, why fix it? You know, and um, for you to be like, mm, I'm just gonna abandon this and I'm gonna move on to something that's closer to me. That's that's I mean that's authentic. That's that's very that's very original and um, and basically, yeah, you're 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 willing to change it up and to show your your fans like, hey, I mean, if you're a real fan of me, then obviously it's it's you're you're gonna fuck with what I what I put out with because I mean, hey, it's coming from me, you know. Totally. There's an artist that I really look up to who I have the honor of actually you know working with from time to time named Blank, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of his productions they're still typically very linear with his project, but he's also been exploring a lot of different ways to tell a story of, of his project. So I have confidence that at least, you know, when there's bigger artists doing the same thing, which, you know, there are, um, but typically when you see like big artists like DJ Snake going from like pop to like rhythm and dubstep, that's mm -hmm. okay because they already have a very established fan oh, base. Sure. When you're trying to make a name for yourself, when you're very, very small and you're doing that, you know, you kind of have that resistance against you because you're second guessing whether or not, okay, will this resonate with the people who liked me for this music and for this style I've been producing? Like, will they like this? And so there's kind of that, that like inner demon battle that you have to kind of like figure out and say, okay, well, you know, if you truly like this project and you really want to like see where this goes, then I'm, I'm sure that you'll at least give this a shot. Um, so yeah, man, I mean, authenticity is important, especially when it comes to dance music just because you can lose yourself with, Okay, well, yeah, like you said, this is working, so why why fix it? And I feel like a lot of artists, if they're doing really well, they keep making that music, and maybe they have a change of heart, but they don't want to, you know, do something different because it's working for them, and they don't want to risk losing a fan base or whatever it might be. You know, obviously, there's a million different reasons, but that's just kind of my my two cents. No, I mean, 
yeah you you definitely do have like you mentioned you like a bigger artist like dj snake can get away with that because they have already solidified um uh like fan base and sound and everything um but like building off of that question or just following that question did you find yourself in the beginning um like following trends or were you even in, from the beginning more so um pushing your own individual vision uh for the for your sound I think like it, it was a little bit of both at first. I would say with the first project, low key, it was more so. Okay, well, um, my heart, I, I really enjoy that music, but does that mean that I really enjoy kind of being on the other side of things where I'm writing it? And okay. those are two different sides to be on, right? Oh, so sure. I, I think when my last project is, yeah, I love that music. I think it's great. I love. I listen to it. It's all over my Spotify library. Um, but when it came down to it, it wasn't the same enjoyment level as it is now when I'm making this kind of music and I listen to it more often. And, you know, it just seems for me, it's more cohesive with this style of music with electro house and techno and even some trance elements and all of everything in the middle. Um, I find myself kind of gravitating towards that more than I was with the last project. And to kind of like answer your question, I think with Loki, yeah, it was very mainstream. It was, it was easier to um get a wider fan base and an audience to listen to that because it wasn't niche where i would say as you know the music now you know my my mom listened to um my collaboration coming out next year i'm sure she probably wouldn't like it as much <laughs> as the first project and that's just how it is because you know it's a very niche audience that you're you're working with here but again authenticity that's that's what makes me happy that's that's where my heart is so um yeah yeah, and, and for you to mention, uh, or, or like one of the first points you mentioned was you wanted to um, evoke a sense of what you feel on the inside, uh, that mysterious, that ominous, uh, whatever it may be, but more of a darker element. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's characteristic of you. And for you to be basically just saying art is a mirror to life. Like this is, this is my, even though this is music, um, to your fans, you're like, this is my life. This is my experience. Um, sure. So yeah, you're, 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 you're adding your own little flair onto it while, while still incorporating stuff that, that helped push you to where you are today. Sure. And it's funny you say that because with the low key project, every single song that was a part of that project was based on a real life experience. <laughs> um, and I always made sure like it, the whole idea behind the last project was tell like kind of like dark stuff in a beautiful way. And all the music, the last project was very bright and happy and melodic for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, now don't get me wrong. Like I'm not a dark person by any means. I, everyone oh, has their course. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. You know, um, this is like, this is the music that I, I kind of grew up on. And it's kind of weird to say that because you have your parents who grow up on like, you know, Van Halen and all sorts of like bands. And then there's me mm -hmm. saying, okay, well, you know, my first concert I ever went to was Dead Mouse in 2010 years yeah. <laughs> And that's all I've listened to ever since was all dead mouth esque music, you know, mm -hmm. and everything in between. So, um, yeah, man. So that, that's to make a, a a long story short or short story long. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no worries, man. I mean, um, yeah, like the, when you mentioned you want to make um, um, something something terrible sound beautiful, and like I, I don't know, I'm I, I'm not a pessimist. Like like I like you, I'm not a pessimist. But right. I also don't like just constantly happy ending, happy ending, happy ending. Because sure. it's like, well, let's be real. Life isn't always full of happy endings. Like just for what it is, it's a lot, like you're always going to face some adversity. So like for you to take a song and um, incorporate dark darkness, um, like whatever it may be, um, like truth, essentially, just like the, the, the face value of, of a situation, but to add like a happy spin on it, um, you're, you're making the content digestible and, and, and giving people um i i talked to a uh, 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 take it or uh, takis in, in my last interview and he same exact thing he he was telling me that that he wants to um create real music but in a way that's digestible for people and for sure. sometimes um it's difficult for us to to hear in a, in a more transparent way someone else going in the same situation that we are um but if you make it digestible enough then hey you're making uh you're who knows you might gain a new fan you know someone that that is listening to a song and it was like wow i feel what he's feeling in this is like, it relates to me. Um, and you make it easier um, to form a connection with the fan, to form a more like authentic, like, like you said, you want that authentic sound. And, and by doing that, adding those elements, but um, changing it a little bit uh, in a way that it's digestible, like who, 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 who can complain? Like that, that's good. And that means that you're doing something right. I mean, I'm pretty sure you know that, but. Yeah, you know. totally. And to piggyback off that, like 
um, aside from like the mid tempo stuff I make, you know, that in my eyes is more of very live set friendly. It's very um, energetic, if you will. Like I view that as, okay, if I'm in the gym, I'm listening to this. Cause whenever I go oh, to the gym, 100%. I dub stepped on Spotify tutorial on, and that's all I listen to mm-hmm. I step out of the gym. Like I said, it's lo-fi chill music, you know? So for me, with what I'm making, you know, the newer stuff that's house for the most part is very digestible, but it still has different elements of electro, but it has melodic stuff in it. And it's almost like I'm combining like everything that I listen to into my own little idea. Um, so again, I, I'm curious to see how people react. I have really big hopes for it. Um, but you know, I'm thinking it'll probably start to, to come out maybe March or April of next year. Hey, I so. mean, I'm excited. And, and, and you're right out of the pandemic too, like, like realistically speaking, April, April, 2021 is about the time when, when everything's supposed to vaccines coming out, all this other stuff. So, Hey, you know, just in time for summer, summer, 2021, you know what I'm saying? That's the case, man. <laughs> like, I, I love relentless beats because they're doing such a great job here with the, with the dance music community in Arizona and mm-hmm. at least having live events for us to go to and it's safe and everyone has a really good time. That's right. You know, yeah. I'm, I just, I really do miss being, in a crowd of 10,000 people with <laughs> what you know around you and you're just making friends and like it's just mm-hmm. it's a different experience than being in a pod but you know beggars can't be choosers right now I'm not going to be a oh, user yeah. like whatever live event I can get I'm going to go to um so yeah man I hope you're right I hope 2021 we got Coachella and EDC and Tomorrowland and all, all those fun fests you know what I'm saying? Maybe socially distanced because I was talking to, uh, like, like you mentioned here in Arizona. Yeah, there have been a couple of like drive-in raves or socially distanced mm-hmm. raves, which is kind of cool. I mean, like one, if you really think about it, it's it's a safer environment for people that really just want to enjoy themselves. Like there's not right. a lot of pushing. Everyone's in their own designated area. And two, um, you get to go out and enjoy a great show. You know what I'm sure. saying? Like for, for all that it is, like it's a safer environment and it's it's a lot, it's a lot, it's both and not only for covid but also for people that just want to enjoy it um, for sure. but yeah you know like hopefully we can't i mean hey moshing is fun though i'm not gonna lie yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you, you got to get into the experience if you want to really feel the concert or remember the concert but uh but yeah you know hopefully hopefully honestly i'm i'm, I'm very hopeful for for 2021 and hopefully you know everything goes back to goes back to normal ready for for your summer hits i'm just ready for this year like there's just a big asterisk next to this year because i think <laughs> anything bad that could have happened has happened this year Minus the fact that I'm just waiting for like aliens or some crazy shit to happen, and that will be. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not gonna. I'd be like, oh, that's 2020. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This was the year I really just suspended my my belief of not thinking ghosts were real, and I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. Spirituality is a real thing. There are ghosts around us. Like everything that's happened, ghosts cannot be the craziest thing that have come out of this year. Like fuck it, I believe in them. <laughs> Like I, if I recall correctly, like the Pentagon, it was in May or June. And they yep, the the UFOs. They they agreed to it. They admitted. And nobody <laughs> said anything about it because <laughs> it's so other crazy shit happening. Like, fuck, man, what a, what a year it's been. Like this is gonna be the year we were all <laughs> through it that our kids will ask us about. It'll be oh totally, like, totally. It's gonna, like it's crazy. And what's crazy is we're the age where we're hundred percent competent and we're hundred percent going to remember like what went down or the important things at least that went down. Right. So it's well, like, we're really, we're really like a, like, it's just a fa- like just a, a moment in history. <laughs> I feel for you guys in college, man, because like, like every adult I've ever talked to in my life has said, okay, your twenties are your quote unquote, the, mm-hmm. the golden age, right? hundred percent. Yeah. It's the best four or five, six years of your life. However long it takes you to graduate college, whatever. But those are the best years of your life, right? Yeah, and definitely. Me, yep, I can agree. I graduated two years before all this, this the shit storm went down. Um, but it's just, I feel for you guys. And obviously, like, all of us being, like, cognizant of what's going on, it's going to be a crazy story to tell on the campfire when we're, like, 40, 50 years old, you know? I might have to write a book, you know what I'm saying? Like, just, just like, every day, because everyday experiences at this point have just become extraordinary. Like, right. you have to, like, do different things. Or like just doing the basic stuff by staying home is a, doing your part. Like that's just crazy to me. Like if you really think about it. So like yeah, like moving forward, our world won't be the same. You know. Like no. but hey, I mean we're all going through it, and yeah, we're we're gonna have some crazy stories to tell, definitely. Oh yeah. for sure, absolutely, man. But uh, you know, so again, part of the reason like I want to move to LA so bad, but I'm also a little hesitant. Is like. I don't know how long that, that this like is going to last for where what does normality look like after 
you know, 2020 ends? Like what, what happens? Do we go back to full capacity at venues? Do we go back to full capacity at bars and restaurants? Mm -hmm. You know, what does life look like? Do people just say, all right, we're over it. And they just move on and we go back to how it was pre 2020. Like, I don't know, you know, so anyways, that's my little rant, but you know, curious to see how it shapes out to be. Oh man. Hey, I, your, your rants are welcome. I feel the same exact way about COVID-19 as you do more than likely. Yeah, man. It's crazy. (laughs) Um, but like uh, in terms of COVID-19, did you see, because I've talked to a, a, a couple, I, I know it was, uh, it was uh, crowd control and um, uh, Takis too mentioned it, but they said that they loved being in front of crowds and, and loved the energy of crowds. And uh, one of the guys from crowd control actually told me that he saw like a whole change in his demeanor uh, because he wasn't able to be going out and um, in a way basking in that glory, um, even though it's, um, it's kind of, it's not the intent of creating music, but it is a consequence or not a consequence, but um, I guess a reaction of creating music. Did you uh, feel that in yourself? Like, did you feel yourself get down a little bit, uh, going to some dark places because you weren't able to go out and yeah. perform in front of people? You know, here's the thing about what's interesting is, is first and foremost, the music industry adapted really quick. Oh, and definitely. is going through hell right now. Like I feel for them because obviously live shows are on pause. Mm. So, for me, when I started, you know, deciding, okay, I want to live stream, I at least want to be creative and again and, and showcase it because that was the only way we could do it was through streams. Mm-hmm. But I'll be honest with you. I mean, seeing the viewer count as a number on the bottom right of Twitch just is not the same as performing in a venue, feeling the energy, seeing bodies, seeing hands up in the air, feeling the bass. Like there's so many things that go into the experience of performing live that although like, again, beggars can't be true, there is during COVID, it's just not the same. And for me, like, don't get me wrong. I haven't sold out a 20,000 person venue, but you know, when I have a hundred people there and they're all, you know, enjoying themselves and I can see that that's a different energy that, you know, you can't really replicate when it comes to online streams. Um, it definitely sucked because this year, you know, I was supposed to play on the ultra um, local stage Mm -hmm. and that was something I was working really hard towards and I had my mom book her flight all my friends were coming like everything was ready to rock and roll and then I think it was like three weeks before ultra happened hey we're not doing it COVID is it's starting you know run rampant Mm -hmm. and I understand why it was just one of those things where it's very unfortunate and for those artists who had this year as like a make or break for them where they had a bunch of momentum behind them, whether it be like they're going to play main stage for the first time, whatever festival it might have been at, you know, I'm sure that how I was feeling probably doesn't compare to how shitty they're feeling, but it, it's still relative and it still sucks because, Definitely. you know, you, you feel like, okay, I'm finally picking up momentum and all of the hard work and the blood, sweat and tears, it's starting to finally pay off, or at least like you're starting to see bits and pieces of it because, you know, you go a long time with just having the belief and the hope that what you're doing is the right way. And that eventually it will pay off. And, you know, you have your dark days. I mean, there's, I don't know of a single artist that goes through this journey of being an artist where they don't second guess what they're doing. They don't think that their own music sucks where, you know, they're like, okay, well, my brand sucks. I don't, I'm not doing enough. Uh, there's, you compare yourselves to others. Right. And I think this year also kind of amplified that like tenfold, at least for me. And I'm sure other artists are feeling the same way, but um, it's definitely been a really brutal year. Part of the reason why I'm in school again, even though I graduated in 2018, was because of COVID. Um, yeah, so for me, you know, although I re- you know, redid my entire music project, I decided, okay, well, how can I go into an industry that, you know, next time something like this just happens, that I can at least protect myself and I can um, make sure that I can still support myself, not to worry about, you know, the what ifs. Right. Um, and that's kind of why I segued into software engineering school is also I, I do. Have, I'm very fascinated with tech. I've always liked tech. It's something I've always been intrigued by. I just never thought I had it in me to code. And I like just kind of, you know, blew my own expectations out of the water, if you will. <laughs> hey, man, so. COVID's a time to pick up new uh, new things. You know, I, I started designing a little bit. I'm I mean, granted, I'm still in school, but you know, I'm going to start writing a script here and there, you know, something to, something to stay busy. And I understand you picked up cooking, as a matter of fact, uh, did. because of all of this. Um, yeah, is, there any, is there any dish in particular that, that, that's, that's your go-to or you're just like trying everything? Dude, you know what's funny is uh, like before before COVID, I, I, if you put me in the kitchen, I couldn't do anything. 
Like it'd be, all right, Hey, I'm going to order Postmates. Like that, that's my extent of cooking. And then like, you know, I just kind of said, all right, like I, I got to figure this out. So my go-to um, is steak. I, I love, okay. I love, okay. cooking steak. Um, there's just like, I, there's four different ways I, I can do it. One of them's in the oven and you know, yeah, you that's right. everything, right. Just, mm -hmm. But that's probably my favorite dish to make, uh, making salmon tonight. Ooh, um, okay. Yeah. So I've been trying to eat like a lot cleaner. Um, and that's been like a focus of COVID, obviously, when you're eating Postmates. That's probably not going to be that healthy. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that's been also I eat Chipotle. I swear to God, I'm not even making this up. I eat, a, I eat one Chipotle bowl every day. I've done that for like six months, dude. And like, I'm probably like the, like the <laughs> best shape I've ever been in my entire life. Like, do you, um, uh, do you, like, my cousin said that you can go into Chipotle and cater and then just have like meal prep for the whole week. Is that what you do? Or you just go in every day and get a bowl? I never thought of that. The only caveat is not fresh and it's not warm. Yeah, that's true. That, that she was like, well, it is going to be a couple of days old, but she's like, I mean, you get Chipotle all week. And I was like, oh, yeah. that's true. I mean, like, I'm literally probably three minutes from a Chipotle for my house. <laughs> yeah, there's one down campus. So once a week or something, I'm always pulling up there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a move. I'll tell you, you know, for me, like I love cooking, cleaning up's never fun, but it's no, fun. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's the reason why I don't cook is, yeah. I mean, I, I really, I, I definitely did get into it. I'm not going to lie. I was like, damn, I got to Cause this is my last year. I'm a senior in college. So I was like, moving forward, I got to start budgeting. I got to literally start getting ready for being an adult. Um, so I was sure. like, Hey, I'm just going to buy a bunch of food and cook and just have to clean. Like that's just, is what it is. Yeah. Not, trust me. I get it. Like cleaning is not the fun part. It's not man, but it's just a part of uh, growing up. <laughs> unfortunately yeah <laughs> um uh just like switching topics a little bit um sure. i understand that you're not a major fan of social media um was that something that um uh, that just came about because of social media that that you just were like enthralled by it way too much and you're like i said take a step back or was it just something that really never got into i'm gonna sound like an old grandpa like, go, ahead. I, go ahead because i don't like social media either go ahead here's the thing man like the social media it needs to be treated i mean i treat it as a tool it, it's just, of course it's just, for an artist of course right but like if you're not using it to like promote a business or a brand or whatever it is that's not you know going to make you money like instagram and social media in general has just become a highlight reel of people's lives mm -hmm. and then at least from my own, like my experience, I'm sure, you know, a lot of people share this. You, you start to follow people who really might not be like really involved in your life or just you've met them once or twice. Oh my right? God. Speak, bro. And, speak. Seriously. Right. And you're like, all right. So then you see stories of them like doing cool shit. Like, you know, they're on a private, a private yacht or they have a boat or they're going on vacations all the time. And like, then you're either at home or like you're doing something that's tedious and you're just like, dude, like, why can't I do that? And you kind of compare yourself. Right. Definitely. Um, but what you don't see, and this is why, you know, content on Instagram content, because you post stuff that people will engage with. No one would engage with you sitting in a chair working nine hours a day, you know, grinding, right? No, yeah, no, definitely. One, <laughs> no one cares, but they do care when they see, you know, a bottle of Vu or Dom P and you're, you're on a beach. Mm -hmm. People are like, that, that's what they care about. So I think for me, like a lot of my anxiety and my, my own inner darkness in the past has come from comparing my life to what other people are doing and not, like, and not realizing that's not real. Don't get me wrong. There's people out there who are, who are actually are traveling all the time. And they have a sick life. But like, I would say 99% of the people that you follow who like flex that, it's not real. No. So I like, I'm totally done with it. The only reason why I'm on social media is because I have to as an artist and also, you know, for marketing and, and to build my brand. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in a perfect world, if we didn't have social media, I would be so happy given then you wouldn't have the same opportunities to build yourself. So it's like, again, I view it as a tool, but that that's my old man rant over and done with, but no, you know. man, like I totally agree. Holy crap. The, the whole thing with, you, like you meet someone you're an acquaintance and you think that you're like that was one thing I struggled with huge I thought like uh, one thing and I'm gonna be very honest right now I, I I'm a people pleaser I'm a middle child so I have to be a people pleaser that's just something that I've always done growing up and didn't realize till recently um, but I, I I've always had to have friends around me because I've had a sibling by me my whole time um, so when I, I there was one one point in like right as the pandemic started I was talking to my friend and I was like, yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to delete Instagram one because it's not helping me. I'm getting way too distracted. Um, especially at the beginning of a pandemic, trying to like change my whole 
uh, work ethic to work online rather than from going from a classroom to coming home to work. Um, so it was really difficult for me to, to differentiate um, and to just push myself into that, into that direction. So I deleted it because of that. But, the, but as the week went on, I was like, wow, I don't really have that many friends. And in a very bleak, even though it's very bleak, it's sure. true. Like I have three, four really close friends and that's it. Those are people that reach out to me either on Snapchat, text message, whatever. But the people on Instagram that, I, that I'm friends with, they're just acquaintances. And the only reason I feel so close to them is because I see them doing stuff online and I'm constantly reminded that they're still in my life when in reality, right. they're really not present in my life. So right. that was one huge takeaway that, I, that, that, that came out of that whole thing. So yeah, I totally agree. Like it's, and then on top of that too, I worked in a, a, at a PR firm this summer and um, one of the things was they called it um, like we had to go on and, and, and go on Instagram, go on a bunch of these websites and search to see that the uh, clients that we were working with were, were uh, promoting the items that we sent them. And when I did that, the first day it was fun. The first day I came in, it was fun. Cause it's like, wow, I get to search Instagram for work. Like, that's crazy. Like, that's so insane to me. That's, this, this isn't work. This is what I do normally. And then yeah. as the days went on and they started asking me to keep doing it over and over again, I was just like, okay, one, uh, I'm tired of this mindless scrolling. Like this is, this is pointless. I'm not getting anything done. I'm getting nothing out of it. And two, like, it's literally just a billboard. Like if, like if I wanted to, like, let's just say I want to follow, um, let's just say Kylie Jenner, because let's, let's be sure. real. Kylie Jenner is a good looking girl. She's, she's, yeah. she's, she's very beautiful. Um, so I want to, I just want to follow her. Cause I'm like, yo, I, I'm a fan of Kylie Jenner. She's beautiful. Like she's pretty hot. Um, but you follow her on Instagram, but then you get ads and stories are all, are all ads. Oh, Kylie cosmetics. Here's what I'm doing. Here's what I'm selling. Here's what, whatever. Even their Instagram posts are just ads. And that's right. when I was like, dude, I can't consume this. Like I know what, I, cause I was on the end that we were basically manipulating the media. So now I understand how the media work. Like, and, and I'm not trying to be superior to anybody. I'm not trying to point that out in any way. Cause if that, if you like Instagram, like Instagram, I'm not, it's not a problem to me. You know what I'm saying? But to me, I, it was just like, uh, I, 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 I don't even use it. I just use it on the, on, on, on Safari. And even then it's 10, 15 minutes a day. If that really, I use Reddit mainly. And even then I hardly go on Reddit, but still right. like, right. that's what I'm saying. It's, and, and the other thing too, with Reddit is like, it's more so information that you're receiving and putting out. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's forums and everything. And, and because you can't see the person, it's like, you're just interacting with uh, someone with the same exact intellect or the same level of knowledge as you. So it feels less, um, uh, how do you say it? Surface level and more so on a, on a, on a deeper connection. Cause it's something you guys actually, um, genuinely relate to, you know what I'm saying? So it's funny. There's two things I want to talk about. Um, small circle thing with the acquaintances. I'll touch on that, but I'm going to piggyback off the Reddit thing. I, I love Reddit solely because again, just like you said, you don't see this person's life, right? Mm -hmm. The most you can see is like what they've engaged with, whatever. That's great. Yeah. And it is like, it, for me, I enjoy digesting content off Reddit more so than Instagram because I don't have the anxiety or the need to compare myself to a person on a Reddit. Definitely. Right. hundred percent. I would still consider Reddit a form of social media. Oh, de de oh totally is. <laughs> it, say it's the point of where, you know, you're broadcasting your life. Right. And you're like, I'm almost more so inclined to engage with content on Reddit than oh, I would definitely. like Instagram, unless I'm like friends with an artist or I'm friends with someone who runs a page or I'm friends mm -hmm. with somebody on in real life. Right. But for example, um, I like, I've had brain fog for the last eight years of my life. Right. And it's gone to a point where like my vision will get blurry. Like memory's terrible. I'm mm -hmm. tired all the time. Damn. Drink like 500 milligrams of caffeine a day. And like, I joined the subreddit. Right. And like, I literally would just like go out of my way to like talk to people and like engage with them because definitely 100 like, percent community of reddit like it's very inviting to like talk to people and like definitely. engage oh, uh, definitely. If I follow, like a brain fog thing on instagram i'd be like yeah I, I feel that but i wouldn't like i don't feel as inclined to engage with like random people on instagram i know that sounds a little weird but like no, that's just, no i, I get it i get what you're saying my mind stuff me too, you know what i mean yeah. now piggybacking off the acquaintance thing so I think Mo Chalizzi posted something like this. It was like a couple months ago, but it's like, and I, this is also a widely known thing. Your network is your net worth, right? And for me, like, I, I also want to remove, you know, monetary reasons as to why I'm friends with people because that's not the only 100%, reason. Why. Yeah. You don't want to base a friendship off of you gaining something. It has to be emotional connection. 
but I do base my, my friendships off of, okay, are you working hard at life? Are you, are you a good person? Are you actually like, you're not, you're not just like in this party phase where you're 24 years old and you're still acting like you're in college or you just don't care or you're complacent or you're okay with being average. Right. And like, for me, that's okay. And if you're any of those, that's fine. But for like what the goals that I have, I have to be around people who are constantly striving for greatness, who are pushing themselves, who, you know, sometimes they're too busy to go out on weekends because they're working or they have other obligations that aren't revolved around going out. Mm-hmm. And like, I am like happy that I have a small circle of friends because I'm inspired by them and I love my, my small group of friends. And I, you know, I feel like as it starts to grow more and more like it was in college, you start to see different like groups of people and like, you know, sometimes it can be a cage. Like if you have too many people that you're surrounding yourself with and they're not constantly trying to evolve as a person, it is a cage in a sense. Like, and that's just kind of how it is. And some people might not want to hear that, but I mean, it's (laughs) it's a bad reality, you know? Dude, everything you're saying right now is literally what I'm living through right now. Not me experience all that stuff, but like a friend of mine. And it's coming to the point where I'm just like fed up with him. Like it's, it's just like, dude, I was, I I met you surface level and you were a cool guy, but the more I get to know you, the more I'm like, holy crap. Like, I don't really want to be around you. Like you, in a way you aren't in, you aren't directly hurting me. Like you're not words that you say, everything that you do is not directly hurting me, but indirectly because I'm friends with you, it's affecting my life in a certain way. And like, it's, it it sucks because it's like the kids, he's a great kid. Like I, I love being his friend, but it's just like, he's like, exactly. Like he's, he, he's telling himself one thing, um but he's he's doing the opposite so in a way he's like 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 you said um he he's in he's stuck in a phase he's he's surrounded by people that have the same exact mindset and he wants to like he the conversations we have are profound like this dude doesn't want to continue doing what he's doing but he also doesn't pull himself out like it's just the harsh reality of things and and yeah i mean i I mean were 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 you in greek life here here down down in, in u of a I was, uh, was so you, you saw it then, huh? You, you saw the both sides. But I mean, at the end of the day, like being Greek life or not in Greek life, there's still, there's still people who 100%. don't strive for more. And then they used to, you know, okay, I'm going out all the time and this is fun. And, you know, I'm going to like not care about my grades or I'm not going to care about the job I get, or I'm going to wait until my second semester senior year to worry about that or whatever it is. And like, those are people, and don't get me wrong. People like, I have, I know people who were like that until they were 28, 29, and then in their thirties, they blossomed, right? It's never too late to. Yeah. Each person is their, like they, each person's their own person. They, they, they blossom at, at their own time. And you know, so I'm not in the position to say what's right or wrong. I just yeah. know in my, for me and where, like what I do and how I operate as a person, I have to be around like minded individuals or else again, like I said, it's a cage. Um, but going back on, on what you're saying, yeah, man, I mean, it's easy and not, not just at U of A, but any school, I mean, you know, when, totally. when you have opportunities to go to shows or festivals or there's the bars and, you know, you have great looking people all over the place. Like it's easy <laughs> to get sucked into the comfortability of that lifestyle. And then, you know, for me, when I, when I graduated college and I went in the real world, it, you know, it was pretty brutal because you go 100%. from on all the time and you're right by all your friends and you know, not really having to stress out about a whole lot. I mean, you're still stressed in college. It's not that's a good amount. Yeah. Walk in the park because it is stressful. But mm-hmm. once you get to your first job, it, it's a total 180 from what you're used to. And it's definitely a transition that, you know, it's it's going to have to happen eventually. And it's not fun. But, you know, my mom always said this thing every four years is a big transition. Mm-hmm. So for me, uh, I was four years of high school, four years of college, and then four yeah. years after college. And, you know, Typically, my mom's always right. It's kind of interesting <laughs> how that how that pans out to be because I like to the buck against the fact that you know every four years is a change and she's usually always right. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> shout out to you, mom. Um, but yeah, man, it's it's life's been very interesting to say the least. <laughs> just to kind of wrap all of that up, it's it's just it is what you make of it. You are who you surround yourself with, you know, and and that's just kind of been a motto for me is be careful who you surround yourself with, you know, because you. I think my buddy yesterday, and this is for sure a quote, like you are the sum of the five cl- closest people in your life. Yeah. Or like you are, yeah, something like that. I, I didn't quite quote that directly, but. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, man. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, honestly, in that point you made, like you're not trying to tell people what to do. Yeah, I, I don't like, you're not affecting my life. I'm not, I'm not trying to preach here. Like that's, I'm not your dad. Like you're an adult. Yeah, you can yeah. do whatever the hell you want to do. But I'm just saying like, 
if you're bringing me down, yeah, totally. I'm going to say something and I'm going to be like, look, man, you got to either switch up. And I've, I've like talked to him too a couple of times. And um, I mean, it's all good, but again, like, Hey, I'm not preaching here. I'm just saying like, this is for me. And, and unfortunately um, in situations, you gotta, sometimes you gotta do what's best for you. Even if that means losing a friend, unfortunately, because like you said, you don't want to be caged down. You don't want to be stuck. And, and especially as an artist, you do not want to have people that'll bring you down because that'll, that can screw up a great opportunity you have. For sure. And I mean, I don't, I don't think anyone in my life right now is like bringing me down by any means, given like, you know, if I had the opportunities I have now presented to me when I was in college, um, <laughs> yeah, actually, my dog, my dog was, oh, you're chill. My, poster. <laughs> I just realized that in the moment, my bad. No, you're fine. My cat, my cat just like literally will walk up here and I have water bottles on my desk. <laughs> knock them over. <laughs> with their cans i'll just walk up and just knock it over and then it'll go everywhere i'm like dude are you serious like come on um but anyways i forgot i forgot where i was going with that tangent so we disregard that <laughs> um but yeah uh just to change the topic like 180 um your your logo it's insane man like it's the half the half confused face with or half confused smiley face with the half like sad face you like you can you explain that a little bit that's actually really fucking sick i appreciate that dude uh so funny enough when i launched the low key project um that was the logo that was a part of that but i had so much attachment to that because for me like the story i told low key essentially was that like you know i put on this happy face for everyone to see but internally you know it's quite the opposite right and i i classify myself as a very stoic person and um you know, a lot of people don't know if something's up or not, because frankly, like I keep to myself and that's a good thing as well as a bad thing. So that, that's kind of where that came from. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, like I'm so attached to that idea and that actual, like that logo for me, like down the road, I want to do either some streetwear or, you know, the label, if it ever come, comes down to it. But mm -hmm. um, that, that logo is like, I love it. So appreciate the, the love on that too, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that. Like, honestly, bro, a lot of stuff you're saying is a lot of stuff that pertain that stuff that I deal with too. Like, I, I like to say I'm a very stoic person too. Like in situations, um, I got really big into meditation and everything. So I learned how to control my emotions and everything, but, and that, that helped with my stoicism. Um, but uh, in terms of like, yeah, when I was, before I started doing all this stuff and I was trying, I was always that person that was putting on a good face. I was always the person that was just like, forget about it and, and move on because you can't dwell on something that isn't going to benefit you in any way until i realized like hey sometimes you gotta sit with your emotions you're a human being dude you feel like like that's okay um but yeah like like to, for you to say um like that's another point of, of of authenticity for you to be like this connects to me because yeah i'm a happy person but or not even a happy person i'm just a collected person but on the inside shit could be hitting the fan and oh, yeah. um and there are a lot of people too out there that, that deal with the same exact thing for so again the authenticity level plays right into your logo you know for sure. And like, for me, um, I'm very big on mental health because I've had my own struggles with that as I'm sure everybody in the world has their own shit. But there's a negative connotation to therapists and therapy. And like, I, I don't understand, I understand it, but I don't. And like, for me, but what became a huge asset for me um, towards the end of college, even from now is having a therapist or I view her more as a life coach. Okay. Realistically, I think having that resource really does um, for, you know, if you, if you're stoic, you know, then that helps you kind of unleash the emotions that you kind of bury inside <laughs> and you can really talk through as to why something's going on and how to do, work through it almost. Um, that's been a huge help for me and, and just life in general, because obviously like, you know, college or whatever it is, real world stuff, like you get jaded pretty easily. Oh, um, awesome. <laughs> it, it, it builds up, man. And, you know, it's the routine it's just yeah. over and over again. You know, Nothing stuff for me, changes you. I, I real life stuff builds up and then like one day the littlest thing can happen and then like it all just like kind of like dude why you know so yeah. then you're like ah oh, shit i've been bottling this up and that's kind of been a big help for me and also just like keep me working hard and, and you know me having my eyes on the prize so yeah yeah and yeah. and therapy definitely needs to needs to be very um they, they need to definitely drop the stigma of you having issues going to therapy because like sure. you said you like it's literally all the therapist is the third party person to help you talk out and figure out why you feel why you feel or maybe just give you reasons as to like talk thinking points you know what i'm saying like it's just sure. to help you 
on your journey of, of mental health. Um, yeah. And like, I, I literally view like a, like a therapy as a center. Like we go to the gym, we work out, like there's, exactly. there's nothing wrong with exactly. your mind and your emotions. Like it's, it's healthy, mm-hmm. you know? So that's, that's my viewpoint. So anyways, yeah, same with meditation too. You know, like I, I'm glad that they have major. They have LeBron James like back in calm. Like you got a lot of you got major. I, I, there's a couple other athletes, but you got major athletes backing up these uh, these meditation sites, and it's like that's great because exactly how are you going to expect to get stronger if you don't work out? So how are you going to expect to get mentally tougher if you don't challenge yourself a little? Like like you don't meditate, you don't you don't create mental elasticity, you know, and it's just like. Yeah, it's in order for you to be healthy, it's mind, body, and spirit, literally. Like it, it can't just be body and and it's gotta be mind, it's gotta be mind, body, and spirit, you know. For sure, especially when like if you're being a creative, like there's a lot of posts on Instagram. It's like, all right, don't don't disregard your mental health. Like it's you know, because there's a lot of times in life where your mental health is always tested, even if not being a creative, like it, you know, it, it, there's always something. So mm-hmm. um piggybacking off that, but I do like Calm. I gave Calm a shot. Really cool app. Um, for some reason, my mind always goes a million miles an hour. So, like, it's definitely my own little um, journey. I have to keep staying with it and, to, like, realize just to kind of, like, simmer down a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, you know, I'll do some breathing exercises here and there. I kind of associate that with meditation. But, like, I haven't gone it into, is. like, you know, a full meditative state. Okay. I don't think. Maybe I have. I don't know. But, <laughs> So. I use uh, I use Headspace, so in, in, in that aspect, we're a little different. But I, I've been doing it, oh God, um, almost a year actually, like every day. Um, oh wow! And um, it like I started just off of a whim. Like the the people at at, at our at our psych services was like, I mean, for the time because they were packed with like uh, they 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 had no clear opening for me to go in and, and talk to someone. So they were like, well, we can give you an eval, and then we can give you just resources. For the time being like we're really sorry but here's some resources and then they were they they suggested meditation and i like gave it a shot and a year later i literally was talking to a friend of mine a, a couple of days ago and i was like i don't know man i feel like either i'm numb to everything or i just um am calm for with everything because like i described it that i'm in the eye of a hurricane and everything around me is swirling around but i'm in the eye so nothing's going to touch me like i'm calm and i'm collected and I was talking to him about that. And he was like, as a matter of fact, man, that's what everyone tries to achieve. They're like, they don't want, and I'm not bragging. I'm not preaching. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that this is something that was really cool for me to understand um, that I went from a place where I was waking up every morning, having panic attacks, having to calm myself down to a place where, I mean, Hey, like my future's coming and I'm not, I'm, it's not that I'm complacent. It's just that I'm not stressed. I'm not worried because I understand who I am as a person. And I was talking to my girlfriend about that too. Um, and I don't want to get too off topic, but um, I, I was saying a lot of people, um, a lot of kids our age, and I'm pretty sure your age too, because I mean, you're not that much older than, than I am. Um, yeah. Uh, a lot of people our age um, are just, they're, they're not, they're scared to grow up, not because they don't want to grow up, but because they don't have confidence in the lessons that they've learned that will take them um, to be, that will take them through adulthood. And um, when I realized that, I was like, wow, I thought about it a little bit. I, I do a lot of introspection um, just randomly, <laughs> um, mainly late at night. Uh, but uh, but uh, introspection is definitely done um, by me. So I was just thinking about it and I was like, OK, OK, like going through everything, like all the stuff I've learned growing up, school, uh, in life with my parents, whatever. Um, and I was like, no, I, I think I'm ready. I was like, yeah, there's stuff I don't know, but I should be ready. Like, wh- why, why would I not be like? Who, who, like Jake Romo, like, no, Jake Romo is ready. He's gone through all this stuff to get him ready for, for, for adulthood and everything. And like, I'm still nervous because yeah, I want to be a kid in an environment that like is catered towards me. Like college is for the most part is basically a simulated society with a leash on it. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't, it it, like, it restricts you from certain things, but it also allows, it also gives you certain things that aren't given to you in the real world. Um, So yeah, of course I want to stay in something like that, but I mean, hey, um, I'm ready. And, and like, there's no reason to be scared, um, unless you truly have lacked something. But even then, like, if you're confident and sure about who you are, um, which comes again with meditation and and, and really giving yourself that opportunity to again, I'm not preaching, I'm not preaching. (laughs) I'm just saying that that this that I'm just giving an example that, uh, that if anyone out there is listening, um, any of our fans are listening, um, meditation will get you to a place where you need to be trust me. And, um, 
I know uh, uh, Mizuno says the same exact thing. Like he, he I, I know you feel the same exact way. Yeah, I think like two things. That's you actually said that like almost like a poet. Um, <laughs> I'm an English major, so. <laughs> um, well, two things like, I, and this kind of sounds like I'm trying to be a poet too. These are just things that I've. I've no, come go ahead, man. <laughs> in my life, and it, it just kind of helped me. But like, obviously, like you said about people not feeling like their lessons have prepared them for adulthood. Well, you know, you also have to see that, like, when bad things happen in life, there's a lesson to be learned. Right? Exactly, 100%. For me, like, there's kind of a mindset switch that you have to make where it's like, okay, well, why is this bad thing happening right now? Versus, like, it's, it's like, okay, well, this sucks. Like, I'm just going to, like, get through it. Like, what's helped me, and this doesn't just happen, right? This has been, like, being cognizant that you need to, like, take a step back. And that's again, goes back to a life coach. Why is this happening, right? So, like for me this year, why why did everything I was working so hard on take a shit? Well, the obvious is COVID, but like you know, what lesson can I learn from here? And that's kind of like okay, well now I have an opportunity to reinvent myself. Mm-hmm. And I know it's easy, and I'm sure a lot of people you know feel like feel really bad and they feel sad, and you know it sucks. And I feel for people. I know that you know my situation. People have a lot worse, um, oh, and I, yeah, I, yeah, I feel for them. Um, I think the thing is, is like, this is an opportunity for you to kind of level up. Um, and that's kind of like where I take every bad opportunity is like, if something for bad experience, if something bad happens, like take a step back and, and ask yourself why it's happening. Um, and, you know, go from there. And then, you know, kind of just keep leveling up and leveling up. Yeah, definitely. I actually had a conversation with my friend about that a couple of days ago. Um, we were talking about um oh we're talking oh the same exact conversation about adulthood and everything and being ready for it and how i was like i was like yeah i'm, I'm just gonna lean into it um well she was like yeah i don't know i'm kind of scared i don't know i'm, I'm actually not confident in, in my lessons and everything and, and then i just asked her a question like she was mentioning some stuff about college and i just asked her like okay what happened and she told me and i was like what did you learn and she told me and i was like what do you want to do and then she told me what she wanted to do and i was like okay there's a lesson right there you literally you're ready what do you mean like and literally, as you were speaking right now, it just kind of dawned on me that kind of like a, a big portion of being an adult is just being a, a, like a, able to adapt, is just being able to 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 pick up to your surroundings and change. And and that is one thing I pride myself on is is being able to adapt. So I think I think that um, and it's again, I'm not preaching. I don't I don't want to uh, profess superiority because these are these are things that we definitely I have to be very clear about because it can get it can be read differently. Um, right. But you just, yeah, you just got to be uh, uh, one, one thing that I learned through meditation and that has helped me like really come to terms with growing up. You just got to lean into things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, every lesson that a uh, failure, that's again, uh, one thing that I pride myself on too, is that I view my failures as, as, um, as, as lessons, even if I don't fail, I'm like, okay, why did I do well? Or like, why was this the outcome? Like, even if it's super tiny and it's just an interaction with the person on the street, um, but it, it, if it, if it bothers me, I'm just going to ask like, Oh, what happened? Like, what did I do? Or what could I have done wrong, different or what could I have done that differently in a good way or differently in a bad way and led to a certain outcome. Um, mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, just being able to, you know, take yourself out of a situation. Um, it, it, it makes you grow, uh, uh especially in, in or yeah, excuse me, uh, retro uh, or whatever you call it, um, hindsight and, and will definitely help form like a foresight and it has like, I, in situations where I've been placed where I'm like, okay, I'm used similar to, I've, I've faced something similar to this. So I'm probably going to back out or do something differently, you know? Yeah. No, I feel you. I definitely like, I definitely feel like it comes off preachy, right? Like everything. Like, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. It's like, obviously my disclaimer is that's not how I want it to sound like. Yeah. <laughs> it worked for me. Um, but you know what you said something that I actually really liked and you said to lean into it. And I honestly, like, I resonate with that a lot because you know, sometimes when like shit hits the fan and feel like you're just spiraling, yeah, sometimes lean into it and ride it out. And it doesn't seem that easy sometimes, but like, hell man, like some of the craziest growths or yeah, growths, I don't even know, man. I'm, I'm half asleep these days. Half of like All the good. growing <laughs> pains I've had, um, I've been leaning into like really challenging times and experiences where like you really find yourself. And, it, mm-hmm. and that's different from like I was saying, you level up. And it's, it really is, you don't really see it until after you look back when like everything's on fire. You're like, holy shit. Like, okay, like I can handle this. I can handle something a little bit more. And you know, here I am now, I learned something new about myself. So anyways. 
Yeah, definitely. And I, I'm sure that you've been in situations like just going back to the to, to your production and everything and your experience. I'm sure you've been in situations where you've made a song or you've been with in an, in an opportunity and you just completely botched it. And you're like, what the hell did I do? And like in the beginning, I'm sure that you were kind of like, ah, oh, or, or, or like when you were starting out, you must have been like, oh, everything's against me. Like, I just can't figure something out. But like as time progressed, as you hit those failures, I'm pretty sure you looked back and you were like, OK, what could I have done differently? okay yeah. maybe been a little maybe added something here or whatever it may be maybe been a little bit more prepared because i mean starting out you don't really realize what it takes um to be really good at something um so you know it's a little bit more half-assed in the beginning but as you progress that's because of your failures you learn like oh shit i gotta get i gotta get prepared i gotta I got, whatever it may be do something different and um and i mean look look where it's gotten you bro like like your music sure. is great your your like your content is amazing i'm excited for what you got coming out appreciate um, it brother yeah, it's it's it has made you to the artist you are today and human being, you know, like, um, hey, I would, uh, I'm glad to I, I'm glad you're a wildcat, bro. Like, like, as, as in all seriousness, like, I, I'm, I'm glad to call you a, a part of the family, you know, Dude, feelings mutual. And, you know, it was it was a pleasure talking to you today and uh, appreciate you having me, man. Yeah, of course. Um, before you know, I, I could sit here and chop it up with you all day. I mean, of course, man. very similar life experience or pretty similar experiences. You know, that's one thing I like to preach too. We all have very similar experiences. Just gotta be transparent about it. Of course, um, of but, course, um, man. But you know, um, <laughs> as much as I would love to, uh, I know you, you're busy. You're busy, man. You gotta produce some stuff. You gotta get back to some some coding. You know what I'm saying? Like graduate student think, life. In the night, um, yeah. Oh, just just one quick question. Are you are are you doing that out of ASU or you're doing it out, or, or through U of A? So neither. Um, okay. There's a school based out of the Bay Area called App Academy. Okay. And basically, I'd call it like a trade school, if you will. Oh, but okay, okay. They, they have locations, I believe, in New York City and San Francisco, um, but because of COVID, everything's online. So it was kind of like easier for me to just go like, okay, log into Zoom at eight a.m. I'm in class till five every day, and you know, I'm done. So didn't have to move or anything it's, it's been nice yeah and thank god you're not over at asu <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's full top living uh 15 minutes away from the asu campus let me that tell must you just, your blood must just be boiling you're just oh, uh, i'll be i didn't realize because my dad went to ucla uh i know we're a little bit off topic but my dad went to ucla so um growing up it was just usc rivalry and it I was like it blood curdling like oh my god it was just boiling like you're just like i hate usc for no reason just because my dad went there and i just hate or just because my dad went to ucla and i just hate him and um, when i came to to when i first like my sister went to a, u of a before i did and she's two years older than me um and um i came here for family weekend and uh they were talking about the whole asc rivalry and everything we we're playing usc or u of a was playing usc um and i was it, in that moment i was like oh fuck usc blah 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 like uh because i still hadn't gotten to u of a but even when I got here, I was just like, I don't understand the rivalry until, because I'm on the club baseball team, until we played ASU's club team. And that's when I was like, holy crap. Yeah, I man. understand it. And I hate ASU. Like, I, I, if you're a great person, you're probably a great person. You know what I'm saying? But just, <laughs> just the fact that we went to a U of A and you went to ASU, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> just like the same thing of like high school rival rivalry. Exactly. Exactly like each other but like it's just kind of like embedded in you for zero reason yeah. <laughs> anything asu i just hate like oh i don't mean to be a dick or anything but we were playing asu club baseball and they were just oh my god the, the game before i had thrown like a three inning uh just gem and we ended up blowing the game we were about a mercy rule then and we blew the game so i was pissed oh. and, the next, and the next day my coach puts me in the pitch and i only get like an inning um and he pulls me out because um he was like oh you you pitched a lot yesterday we're just gonna cut it and i was i was pissed because i was like oh fuck is you and i'm yeah. walking off and they're calling my name the other players are calling they're like all right bye romo bye romo i just walk off no look just flip them off <laughs> i mean i was pissed dude i was like why did i do that uh, yeah. i don't even know i was just i was just blood blood boiling but that's what i'm saying it is just it's just ingrained <laughs> you wore a U of a shirt on accident down to oh god new uh, territory and i didn't even know i was going down there i i forgot <laughs> I was heading down there, but I wore one. <laughs> and dude, the second I hop out of the car, it's just like it may have like incited a riot. Like everyone was just chirping, like, oh my god. And it's like, dude, like if you got to know me, you probably wouldn't be talking exactly. to Exactly. Right? No, totally, exactly. <laughs> I at least I hope so. But you know, anyways, man. Yeah, I mean, quick one one last story. Dude, I can go over so many ASU stories. I'm actually gonna give two. 
um, one, um, I was in the gym my freshman year and this guy was wearing an ASU shirt and I looked around and no one was giving him any grief. And I was like, dude, I'm pretty sure if we, like you said, I'm pretty sure if we were on ASU property, we'd be getting shit on. Like we would just be getting pushed around. Like the fuck you doing in the gym? Not even the workers said anything. I was like, dude, we're on a UA wreck and you're allowing them to wear it like that. Literally it's inciting a riot, like low key. Like if you understand the rivalry, come on now. And then like, again, my freshman year, we were, we were in one of the dorm. I, I don't know. You probably remember Lycans, correct? I do. Okay. Yeah. We were hanging out in Lycans and everything. And we were, we were playing ping pong against this kid. And all of a sudden he just says he's from ASU and he just started because he beat all of us. And he was just like talking about bragging about he was from ASU and just shitting on U of A. And everyone was like, all right, dude, like, take it easy. Like one, we're, we all go to the U of A and two, you're on U of A campus and three, you're talking shit about U of A. Like, that's very bold of you, my guy. And like, we were just like, his friends were like, all right, sorry about that. Sorry about that. He's just like an asshole. And they just pulled him away. And I was just like, damn, like we, we, we're, we're way too, uh, we're, we're, we're way too lenient down here when it comes to, nice, comes to crossing those, those colors, but, um, okay, man, we're the superior school. It's okay. Exactly. Yeah. We take the high road, <laughs> well, man. That's, that's the five to move to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. but again, I just want to, I just want to give you a, a shout out. Thank you for coming on. I had an amazing conversation, but before I let you go, uh, we do ask our guests, uh, one final question. It's more so a two part question. Um, okay. If there's anything, uh, one piece of advice you would like to get, uh, let a younger you know, or um, just an artist starting out in general. And uh, second part to that is, um, if there's anyone you're working with right now, or that um, you think deserves a little shout out, a friend of yours, whoever, um, you're more than welcome to shout them out. And it doesn't have to be one, it can be however many you want. For sure. So um, advice to younger self, dude. Um... I mean, it would probably piggyback like off of all the stuff we talked about today. Like, you know, it, life, life isn't just going to be like this amazing, fun journey the entire time. Like you're going to hit some patches. It's going to suck. Like it's going to get shitty. But I mean, if you get knocked down eight times and you stand up nine, like that's all that matters. And you're going to get knocked down more than eight times. I'll tell you that much. For artists who are just starting, um, dude, I mean – like I'm learning new shit every day, right? Like I'm about to enroll into another academy because for me, like one of my weak points is mixing and mastering, right? Like I get it, but it's not where I want it to be. So I would say, and this goes even with coding, like you're always going to be learning new shit. Um, one of the biggest things that have always helped me, even with coding or music or gaming, whatever it is, I always seek out a mentor. And I think mentorship is vital because you can avoid wasting so much time and making mistakes when the person above you has made them and can kind of give you the shorter path to the same destination, right? And I preach mentorship because I think it's vital, again, even with life, the life coach, that's my mentor, mm-hmm. with school, I have tutors I go to with music production, I have mentors and tutors. Like, I always seek them out because they know more than you. They've been through it already. And that's always been crucial. Mm-hmm. Um, now for shout outs, um, I'm working with the Wolf Logic boys. Love them. We have a really cool song coming out uh, next year. So stay tuned for that. Uh, shout out to Crimson Child. He was just here in Phoenix recording a set. Um, Got to see him all the way up from Canada. Um, and just shout out to anybody who, who's watching this today that, you know, has been following my journey. Just want to say thank you. Um, I'm excited for 2021. Hopefully you guys like the stuff I'm putting out. It's going to be a little bit different. Um, but yeah, man, it's all, it's all I got for you. Hey, I appreciate it. You know, we, we covered a lot today. Um, I'm glad. I'm really glad. For sure, a lot man. of people don't get the opportunity to see that side of artists. And for that's, that's the point of this podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just wanted to be a play like, dude, Howard Stern, huge influence for me growing up. And for sure. um, I listened to him every day going to high school, every day on the way to high school. My dad would just put him on. So, um, yeah, I just want to create an environment that we're able to have this conversation. So I'm, I'm yeah. very glad you came on. I'm really glad that we had a former Wildcat on here, you know, like that, 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 that makes me so happy, man. I, I, I don't think you realize it. Um, like, damn, uh, the fucking Wildcat, like hopefully, dude, I, I, and one thing that, that, that I'm, that, that I was talking about, thinking about like recently, um, I want to be, I, I, I know that you're on the path too. But um, like be a notable alum, you know what I'm saying? Like I know for a fact that you will like with the path that you're going and, and, and the route that you're going and, and, and the, the, the um, just your work ethic is going to get you there. So shout out to you, man. Like, like that's to, to be like 
Courtney Kardashian, like, yeah, that's cool, but I want to, I want, I want Ma, or, uh, Mazana on there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want someone that, that I met and talked to and was given the opportunity to, to just chop it up and, and, and somehow relate to it in, in, in certain ways. So thank yeah, you man, 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 for coming. Having me, dude. This is, this is great. I appreciate what you're doing. You know, obviously it's definitely nice to have an opportunity for at least people to see, you know, okay, I like this guy's music, like who is he as a person? Right. So 100%. hopefully this always gives someone a glimpse of, of who I am and, you know, appreciate it again, man. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, don't forget to follow uh, Muzana on Instagram. That is um, Muzana, Muzana Music. Muzana music. Uh, don't forget to check out his music on Spotify. That's under Muzana. SoundCloud as well, correct? Yep, Muzana Music. Muzana Music on SoundCloud. Um, don't forget to look out for his new music. Yeah, it's coming in a couple months, but set the dates because more than likely, or set an approximate date, because <laughs> more than likely that stuff is going to be the, the, the music of, of summer 2021 um don't forget to like and subscribe on the rise music don't forget to follow us on instagram don't forget to watch our old videos and don't forget to turn on those notifications and smash those like buttons because we could really use those um again i just want to give a shout out to uh muzana for coming out uh thank you again for being a for being a dude thank you again for chopping it up and thank you again for being a former wildcat bear down oh, baby bear down brother all right peace out you guys